Good evening, people of God. It is an honor to come into your homes tonight and to teach the word of God and to pour ourselves over the scriptures. Welcome to the fire of Jesus Christ ministries and our broadcast, The Touch of Jesus Christ. Uh, it is just so wonderful to come into, the, into your homes and to uh, talk about the word of God with you. I want to first thank Apostle Julio and Pastor Ann for the opportunity to preach and to teach God's word on tonight. Well, I don't take any moment for granted. I don't take uh, any opportunity for granted. Um, the Lord is just so faithful. He's faithful in all things. So tonight, grab your Bibles because we are going to jump into God's word and talk about the faith walk. You know, it's just so very important that before we jump into the word of God, that we understand that um, walking by faith is one of the found is, is one of the foundational things that the Lord requires of us. The Bible says that the just shall live by faith. And I believe that in this hour, in this time, we need the we need more faith in the Lord and we need to be so sure that we are living and walking by faith. The Lord has, I believe the Lord has had our church on the, going back to the roots of the word of God. The Lord's been talking about to us about being ready. And I think that um, being ready kind of pushed us into prayer and it, and pushed us into talking about fasting and pushed us into talking about grace. And so I believe that the Lord, the spirit of the Lord really has us going back to the basics of the word of God and understanding who he is so that when we are asked the hope of our calling, we are able to give a sound answer to those who ask us. Amen. So tonight we're going to talk about faith and we're going to talk about the faith walk and the men and women of God who lived and walked by faith. Let's pray. Father, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, we thank you. We thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to open up the word of God and to hear what you have to say to us. Oh, Holy Spirit, lead us and guide us. Show us those things that you would have for us to see. Lord, I thank you that even while this word is going forth, that you will be dealing with your people about issues that they are currently dealing with. Holy Spirit, I thank you for touching every heart, for touching every mind, for infusing your people with hope, for infusing them with fresh faith, for infusing them with your word. For, for oh Lord, it is your word that brings light. The Bible says that the entrance of your word, it brings us light. So illuminate our understanding, Holy Spirit, and thank you for being our helper. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to talk about the faith walk. The faith walk. When we talk about faith, we think we have to really take a step back and talk about life. Because you see, life is complex. When we think of life, we think of numerous thoughts that come to mind. Sometimes we think of marriage or we think of anniversaries or we think of families or we think of babies being born. But we don't always talk about the downsides of life, like fear, like pain, like sorrow. We always think about happiness and we think about joy. And even in all of these things, these words are still unable to illustrate the complexities of life because you guys, life can get complicated. If you haven't already, if you live long enough to know, you know that life can get complicated. There's marriage and then there's divorce, there's birth and then there's death. There's, there's happy times and then there's sad times. Life can get complicated so complex and it is the complexities of life that push us that should push us to the Lord because even in those dark times even in pain even in sorrow the Lord 
the the shame, the hopelessness, the doubt, the disappointment. Yet God, he still implores us by his spirit to live and walk by faith. God says to us over in Habakkuk 2 and 4, he said, the just shall live by faith. So if you are just, if you are a blood washed believer, if you believe in the Lord and, and the death, the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you got to live by faith. The Lord reiterates this over in Romans chapter one, verse 17, the just shall live by faith. Over in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. So the Lord is so serious about us living a faith walk. And he's so, so um, intent intentional about telling us about faith because this is important and he wants us to stand on faith. Okay? He wants us to live by faith. He wants us to walk by faith. Everything that we do, my brothers and my sisters, we do it by faith. You know, when I was on my walk, I like to walk to get my 10,000 steps in. And so when I was on my walk, I was walking on the sidewalk and I heard the spirit of the Lord say to me, faith helps to keep you on the straight path. It helps to keep you on the sidewalk. I said, okay, Lord. So then I started to look around because, you know, when you get in those moments with the Lord, you really have to uh, quiet your spirit and, and hear and hear what else the spirit of the Lord is saying to you. I see construction. I see kids playing. I see a squirrel running. And I'm looking at all of these things. And then I, I look down and I'm in the grass. I had gotten off of the sidewalk and the Lord unctioned me and really wanted me to understand that faith helps to keep me. It helps to keep you on the sidewalk, on the paved road, on the straight path. Because if you go by the things that you see, people of God, if you go by the things that you are watching and looking at that are on the side of you that are not on the path, it's easy for you to stray. It's easy for us to stray and get off the path that the Lord intended for us to be on. We must be intentional by, by, uh, about walking by faith and keeping our eyes on the Lord. Because when we keep our eyes on him, he keeps us on the straight path to righteousness. And when things and chaos or situations are going on around us, we won't be detoured by the things that we see. Why? Because we walk by faith and not by sight. This walk is not dependent upon the things that we see. It's not dependent upon the things that we are noticing with our natural eyes. But it is the faith of the Lord Jesus that lives inside of us that compels us to trust him, that compels us to believe him, that hallelujah, that compares us to follow his word, to follow his guidings, no matter what life looks like. You see, God is not moved by your emotions. God is not moved by life and ups and downs and death and sorrow and joy. God is not moved by any of those things. The Lord is moved by your faith. Feelings are not faith, people of God. Feelings are not faith. Feelings will catch up later. There will be times in your life where you will have to say, you know, I am going to live by faith. I'm going to believe God and my feelings will catch up later. I may not have joy about this situation. I may not be happy about this situation. I may not be super ecstatic about it, but I'm going to believe God anyway and allow my feelings to catch up eventually. Feelings are not faith. We must operate outside of our feelings and trust the Lord. You know, faith is, is like a spiritual currency. It's how we get what we need from the Lord. You know, when, when you go to the store, you use your debit card or you use cash or you use e-transfer. You use, for those in the, on the American side, you use a, 
uh, Cash App and Apple Pay and all of these wonderful things to do your transactions. And you do your transaction and you get your groceries or whatever good or service you need. It's the same way in the spirit. When you have, when you walk by faith, when the Lord says that the just shall live by faith, you activate your faith and the Lord blesses you. You activate your faith and the Lord consecrates you. You activate your faith and the Lord sets you apart and he takes care of you. He says, because in order for you to live, in order for us to live, we need faith. We need belief in God. We need trust in God. Those words are, are, are dual when it comes to faith. We must have faith in the Lord, not in the things that we see, because the things that we see can change at any time, people of God. The things that we see can alter at any time, but your firm foundation and your firm faith in God is never shaken, should never be shaken because God's word is never shaken. The Bible says that God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So you can trust in him even when your situation shifts, even when your situations change, even when your emotions seem to alter, you can still have faith in God. Let's consider Gideon. Judges chapter 6, verse 12 through 16, we see the story of Gideon coming to life. We know that before the king of is the kings of Israel started to come into their succession, the Lord used prophets and he used judges and he raised up various judges like Deborah and and and, and Gideon. And then we have others who the Lord used to bring the children of Israel into righteousness. So we have here Gideon. And the Bible says that the angel and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, the Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Hmm. So we have Gideon and God comes to Gideon and he, she tells Gideon, I am with you, thou mighty man of valor. And what does Gideon say to the Lord? The Bible says in Judges chapter 6, verse 15, and he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. Isn't that just like us to tell God what we have and who we are as if he doesn't already know, as if he didn't already call us, as if he already doesn't know that we are our financial situation? as if he doesn't already know our family situation, as if he isn't already familiar with who we are. He created us. And yet we still have the tendency to tell God what we have and what we don't have. That is not faith. I, like I reiterated before, my friends, we must not, we must operate outside of our emotions. We must operate outside of our feelings and not tell God who we are and what we have. And even if we do tell God who we are and what we have and what we don't have, just like Gideon, God calls us anyway. He called Gideon anyway. And, he, and the Lord said unto him, peace be unto thee. Peace be unto thee. Fear not, thou shalt not die. The Lord told Gideon, I'm going to use you to deliver the people of Israel out of the hand of the Midianites. What does Gideon respond to the Lord? He says, I'm poor. I'm the least in my father's house. I don't have this. I don't have that. And the Lord tells Gideon, be at peace. Don't fear. You shall not die. How wonderful it is to know that we have the Lord who is on our side, and he is Jehovah Shalom. He is our peace, and the Lord gives us his peace, and he tells us the same way he tells Gideon, don't fear. Peace be unto you. Don't you fear. Peace be unto you, because this thing is not going to kill you. This thing is not going to take you out. This thing is not going to break you. 
you shall not die. I'm prophesying to somebody. Peace be unto you. The situation you are in, is, is it may shake you, but it is not going to kill you. Hallelujah. It may, it, it, it may have, have you feeling, like we used to say, some kind of way, but it's not going to kill you. You shall not die. Like the Lord told Gideon to fear not, the Lord is saying to us on tonight to fear not. Don't be at fear. Be at peace. You shall not die. The Lord says over in Judges chapter 6, verse 34, but the spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon and he blew a trumpet. The Holy Spirit came upon Gideon. I'm getting excited, y'all. And he blew a trumpet. The moment he blew the trumpet, a beezer was gathered after him. A beezer was a whole tribe in the nation of Israel. They gathered after him, after him. Watch this. You cannot blow your trumpet without the Holy Spirit. What am I saying? I'm saying you cannot live this walk. You cannot walk this life. You cannot walk by faith without the help of the Holy Spirit. There would be, there have been no way that Gideon would have got the victory that he got if he did not have the Spirit of the Lord to come upon him. If he did not, he, if he blew his trumpet without the spirit of the Lord, he would not have had any help. We must make sure people of God that whatever we do, we do with the help of the Holy Spirit. We do it with the Lord, because if we try to do it outside of him, it will fail. It will not work. So whatever you do, Blow your trumpet with the Holy Spirit. Whatever you do, do it with the Holy Ghost. Let's go a little deeper. Abezer. That name Abezer means my father is help. John chapter 15 verse 26 says, But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. That word comforter in John 15, 26 is the Greek word paraclete. It means helper. So literally, when Gideon blew his trumpet, the help came. The, my father is help. When he sounded his trumpet, immediate help came. The spirit of the Lord came upon him. And when the spirit of the Lord came upon him, his help came. We cannot blow. Let's plug that in. We cannot blow our trumpet without the father's help. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We cannot blow our trumpet. We cannot do marriage. We cannot do business. We cannot do ministry. We cannot witness. We cannot testify. We cannot teach the word, preach the word, um, uh, anoint and appoint without the father's help. We need his help in every area of our life. We need his help in every facet of life. Because if we attempt to do it, like I said it before, if we attempt to do it without the Father's help, we will get into trouble every single time. But when we have the Holy Ghost with us, hey, this, this, the comforter with us, the, the helper with us, we can do all things. We can do great things. So the Bible says, Gideon blew his trumpet and immediately the Father's help came. We must trust in the Lord. We must trust in the Lord just like Gideon trusted in the Lord. So the story goes on and the Bible says Gideon blows his trumpet and all men of Israel, they start to gather to him to help him defeat the Midianites. Then God says, listen, and, and read it in your spare time. God tells Gideon, listen, I can't, I can't get the victory with all these people. There's too many people here. I can't do this with all of these people because what the Lord wants to do in your life, he wants to get the glory out of it because if it's too much of us in it, if it's too much of, of you in it, then you'll say that you got the victory, that you'll say you did it by your own hands, 
then you'll say you had the money, you had the finances, you had the intellect, you had the wherewithal. But God is saying to Gideon, God said to Gideon, and the same thing he's saying to us, it's too much of you in this picture. I need to get rid of some of this extra stuff. I need to get rid of some of these distractions. I need to get rid of some of these friends you got around you, Gideon. Because if you're going to get the victory, you're going to get the victory my way. And that's what the Lord said to Gideon. And just like the Lord said to Gideon, he's saying to us tonight, if tonight, if you're going to get the victory, you're going to get it my way, says the Lord. You're not going to get it your way. You're not going to get it the way you want to get it. You're going to get it my way because God God says his way is the only way for his glory. And if he's going to get any glory out of us, he's going to do it his way. So the Bible says that God called, that that all of these men came gathered to Gideon to help him defeat the Midianites, 32,000 men. God says that's too many people. God says, you go and tell those men. If you're fearful, you go home. The Lord, the, Gideon went to his men. And he tells his men, the Lord says, if you're fearful, you got to go home. How many left? That, that is 22,000 men left. Go read in his in your spare time. That left Gideon with only 10,000 men to defeat a whole army of people, the Midianites. God, then guess what God said? God says that's still too many. 10,000 is still too many people. I can only imagine Gideon's frustration. Because Gideon was already a fearful guy. And now he goes from 32,000. He blows his trumpet. He trusts the Lord. He goes from 32,000 men that will help him down to 10,000. 22,000 people left. Because the Lord wants to get glory his way. So God tells Gideon still too many. He tells Gideon, listen, take those men to the water. Take them to the brook. When you see certain men drinking water certain ways, God tells him, I want you to put them in two different groups. He says, those who are drinking water, lapping it like a dog drinks water, put them in a group. And then he says, those who are cuffing the water, putting it to their hand, put those in a group. After Gideon followed the instructions of the Lord, and separated the two men, the two groups of men that left him with only 300 men. Only 300 men. And the just shall live by faith. And the just shall live by faith. For we walk by faith and not by sight. 300 men. That was all Gideon was left with. Out of 32,000, the Lord brought it all the way down to 300 because God is going to get the glory out of our lives his way. Because the Bible says in Proverbs chapter three, to trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding and in all of thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Even when it doesn't make sense, we must trust in the Lord. Even when we want to lean on our own knowledge and our own understanding, we must trust in the Lord. Faith and trust are interchangeable. We must trust that God knows what he is doing, no matter how mysterious his ways may seem. No matter how many people the Lord roots out of your life, no matter how thick situations may get, no matter if God takes you from being around 32,000 people to 300 people, we must trust that God knows what he is doing. No matter how mysterious his ways may seem. The Bible says that Gideon got the victory. The Bible says that after Gideon, separated these men and got 300 that the Lord told him to take you and your servant and go down into the camp of the Midianites. And then you will see that you've already got the victory. The Bible says he went down the night before the battle 
and he heard one of the Gideonites talking to another Gideonite. To talking, I'm sorry, talking to another Midianite. To go down to the Midianites, and he and he heard two Midianites talking about a dream that they had. And the Bible says that the Lord showed the two Midianites that Gideon would get the victory. And all this time, Gideon was afraid and fearful. But the Lord had to show Gideon that when you trust me and when you put your confidence in me and when you put your faith in me and your hope in me, God had to show Gideon, I will not fail you. I will not fail you because you can trust him at his word. The faith walk will require you to step outside of your comfort zone. Just like Gideon, even though he said, I'm least in my father's house, I'm the poorest in my father's house, yet God called him to be a judge over Israel. The total opposite of what he thought he should have been doing. The, the, the faith in God, trusting in God, will require you to step outside of your comfort zone by, like Gideon. It will cause you to move beyond your feelings. It will cause you to trust the plan of God. And it will cause you to move beyond what you see. Just like Gideon, he couldn't trust the 300. Because in his eyes, that would not have been enough. But what he didn't understand was that God had already handed him the victory. And the same way that God handed him the victory, he's handing us the victory. No matter what we think we see, God loves to work in the background. He loves to maneuver behind the scenes and get the victory in ways we didn't think was possible. For with men, is it, it is impossible. But with God, nothing shall be impossible. The faith walk in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32 and 33, it says, And what more shall I say? The writer of Hebrews writes, For the time would befall me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel and the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, and stopped the mouths of lions. The work that Gideon had done for the Lord was so great that it was still talked about for centuries. It is still talked about today because they trusted in the Lord, because they had faith in God, not that they were perfect people and not that they didn't have shortcomings or failings, but because they had faith in God, they did, they wrought much righteousness. We are able to stand because we have biblical witnesses. We are able to stand because we have people, we have the host of heaven backing us up. We have Abraham, and Moses, Joshua, and Caleb, Gideon, and Deborah, Esther, Jeremiah, many others. And we have Jesus, who sits on the right hand of God, interceding for us. We have to be victorious. We will be victorious. We must be victorious. But we can only be all of those things when we live and walk by faith. No matter what test this life may bring, the Bible says in Mark chapter 11, verse 22, and Jesus answering said unto them, have faith in God. I don't care what happens. I don't care how frustrated you seem. The grace of the Lord Jesus will be upon you and you must have faith in God. No matter what comes, keep your faith. No matter who leaves, stay in faith. No matter how uh, perplexing this life can get or complex this life can be, have faith in God. Because when you have faith in God, my brothers and my sisters, you will always, we will always get the victory. Hallelujah.
Let's close out with a word of prayer. Most precious God, we give you all of the honor. We give you all of the glory. We give you all of the praise. We thank you, O oh Lord, that you are the one that gets us victory in every area of our life. You told us in your word that the just shall live by faith. You told us, Father, to walk by faith and not by sight. So, Father, we ask on tonight that you would help us to trust in you more, that you would help us to put our confidence in you more. You tell us in your word to don't cast away our confidence because within our confidence, there is great recompense of reward. So, Father, we thank you that you are the one that goes before us. You are the one that keeps us on the straight path. You are the one that anchors our soul when life tries to get complex. We thank you, Father, that you have all things under control. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being with us, for being our comforter, for leading us and guiding us in all things. We trust you. We love you, and we thank you for your grace. I ask a special blessing on every hearer on tonight. Father, I thank you that this word that you've given will help propel your people to higher heights and to deeper depths in you. Take your people, Father, from faith to faith and from glory to glory. Thank you, O oh Lord, for your goodness and your kindness towards us. In Jesus' name, we give you thanks and amen. I pray that you have rest on tonight and be blessed.